Nice, dang it, right when I set the plant down, I banged the table, now it's starting to close up. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Biophytum sensitivum. I've learned challenging plant to film because if you move it, they close the leaves up, which is part of the appeal. That's one of the reasons a lot of people like to grow them is because of their fun foliage that closes up when you touch it. It doesn't make for the best thing when you're trying to film a video if you have to move them around and then they start to close up on you. Cute little plants, aren't they? These are typically sold as a terrarium plant. I just got these in from Etsy. I have wanted some for a while, mostly so I could pot them up into this bonsai container so my little guy here could have his own palm tree looking thing to grow up there right above his head. Thought I'd talk about them. These aren't in the best of shape. They just came out of a package last night and uh, they've been moved around a lot for the purpose of potting them up. So they're all wilted down and closed up. But I think you can get the picture of what they're supposed to look like. I'll put some stuff up here on the screen. Look at, aren't they pretty? Nice green foliage, it's all opened up and not all sad and sassy looking. They're fun plants, relatively easy to grow to given the right conditions. They're very prolific too. Typically when you get these, you'll be getting them from seed. You can sometimes find them as grown plants. It's not as common I've noticed in the US. I've heard from some of y'all over in the UK that you can find them pretty easily sold with terrarium type plants. These are a plant that I see most often actually as a hitchhiker with some of my other plants when they're coming up from the south. So just like poking out of the soil underneath an Adenidia palm or some of the tropicals. The kind of thing that typically I see them and I just rip them out because I forget that if you let them grow, they start to look really pretty. Also the camera, it just does not want to focus on these things. So you get the picture, right? They're really cute. And like I said, typically a terrarium plant. These are an understory plant where their native habitat, you find these growing along streams and beds of water, beds of water, that's not, that's not how you say that, bodies of water. They like a lot of moisture. They don't like things cold. They're an understory plant, like I said, so they don't like a ton of light directly on them. That being said, in a terrarium, they're typically fine under your terrarium grow lights. If you have them outside, then no direct sun, at least not in the afternoon, I would say filtered light past like 10 in the morning would be best. Maybe some direct sun before that. They stay small. These two little guys, these are actually mature. You wouldn't know it from looking at them, but that's not going to get too much bigger than this. I know this because they have their flower buds on them. Man, that camera hates these things. You're right there, right? Right in front of my index finger. That's a flower bud. That's a fun thing and also a sad thing. So the biophytums, they're considered more of an annual type plant, meaning that after they flower and set seed, that's typically when they also die. But the good news that comes with it is that they are very easy to sow from seed. You can just wait for the flowers to fully mature. When they open, they have what looks like a cap. That's what the seeds sit inside of. And in nature, what happens is when water hits that, they eject their seeds and they're self fertile. So you don't need to have more than one in order to have some good seeds to work with. Just let them sit in water for like a day, maybe two max, and then drop them into some soil and germinate them just like you would most typical seeds. They are not difficult to get going. As far as the biophytums are concerned, these two are actually pretty dinky. They can be larger than this, more so the top of the plant, we'll call it the crown up here. That's where that can be much larger than these, typically deeper green, but you know, these just came out of a box, so they're not looking too great. Going to need some time to recoup and recover from being shipped and then from being repotted. I have this one over here potted up in, well, they're both in an all-purpose potting mix that holds on to some moisture, similar to what I would use for a fern or really a lot of just terraria mixes. This one, I have a wicking cord that goes down here into this, and this is full of water because this is a very difficult container to water thoroughly. It's just, it's very small. So it's hard to make sure that, that water's really getting into this entire thing. So there's soil inside everything over here. So that's why I'm doing that self-watering for that one. I think it will appreciate it. Keep them with a good amount of humidity. Generally over 50, 60% is good for them. Similar to a fern, it's an excellent plant. If you want something that you can grow under glass, then that's always an option. This is, I think, a little bit too big for this, but you get the point. You can keep it in a dome if you wanted to. If they look neat, you can do all kinds of fun little scapes with them because they have that really cool palm tree look to them. That really interesting monopodial growth this lends them to being used for lots of different things. So like I said, typically people put them in their terrariums, vivariums, those sorts of things where they tend to be pretty sturdy. And when you have them in that kind of setup, if you have enough organic matter in there, 
then as they flower and start to die off, typically you'll start to see them popping up all over the place later on. Longest I have ever kept a biophytum was about a year, maybe it was like 14 to 15 months. They can go 18 months, sometimes longer than that. And I may go ahead and cut the flower buds off these just because it seems premature. I just got them. I'm not ready for them to go into flower and die just yet. But that isn't necessarily always how it works either. Just because they go into flower doesn't mean that they're right about to die. Sometimes they'll put out multiple sets of flowers before they really start to weaken up and die off. And the flowers are really pretty to look at too. They come in white and yellow, sometimes pink. You never really know what you're gonna get. Oh, and they fold those leaves up at nighttime too. So that's another reason that mine are fairly closed up because it's cloudy and I have them over here underneath an umbrella so that I can film without the light blowing everything out. Not that that's helping. What's the deal here? Yeah, there isn't much else to say about them, which is a good thing. That just means that they're really easy plants. They're pretty common. Like I said, usually in the U.S. you'll be getting them from seeds. Some places online may have them already started for you. That's what I did here because I didn't have the patience, but I'll be saving the seeds from these and keeping them going moving forward. They don't need much as far as care goes. As long as you have some humidity for them and some dappled light, they're pretty easy to take care of, which is why this is a shorter video. It could just say, hey, these are cute. Keep them out of direct sun. Make sure they get some dappled light. Don't let the soil dry out. Don't let them sit in water. And that's about it. Yeah, those are the basics for these guys. This looks a lot better when it's not all mad at me from repotting it and moving it around. At least it did for like the 20 minutes I got to see it out of the box before I repotted it. Probably should wait a day or two to do something like that, but I was in a rush. Needed to get it done and figured to just rip that band-aid off so that's why they're looking like that. I filmed the whole repotting and all that stuff. That'll be in Saturday's video at the beginning of the video. If you're interested in that, it's mostly me just being very timid about not breaking their roots because like the mimosas, mimosa pudica, the sensitive plant, similar to these as far as when you touch them, they fold their leaves up. These are much more slow to do that, but they will do it. Just takes them a little bit longer. Similarity other than the sensitiveness on their foliage is that they have extremely delicate roots. So use caution when repotting them. Do not tear their roots up any more than you have to. Ideally, not at all. Because they're not even a plant where you should have to worry about them becoming root bound. That's well, not likely to happen because they stay so incredibly small. So you shouldn't need to pull and tear at the roots as it is. Yeah, and I don't think I really emphasize on the soil and watering as much as I maybe should have. Don't let them sit in water. They don't want soggy conditions, a self-waking cord. That's not the same thing as sitting in water. And they do not like to dry out. If they dry out for like a day, they'll probably be okay. But if they do, I would recommend rehydrating from the bottom and up, allowing the soil to wick the moisture back up as opposed to trying to saturate it from above. That way things can just rehydrate more to the stasis of where it needs to be as opposed to flooding it and shocking the plant. Does that, that make sense? Because they're plants that like fairly stable and steady conditions. So too much of anything in either direction that can make them upset, potentially kill them. Okay, there it is. Cute little baby palm trees. I mean, not really, but you get it. It's a palm tree appeal, but not a palm tree, not at all. Comment down below with whatever you have to add. This is meant to be more of a spotlight with just a little bit of care stuff sprinkled on top. Hope everybody's doing well and a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.